Welcome everyone back to the EUF Elite Invite here from Bern, Switzerland. Mixed quarterfinal action, deep space from London in the UK up against Seska Distus of Strasbourg in France. Seska Distus in the blue, beginning the game on offense. Antoine back to Arsenal. Finds that little inside channel. Petito, there's going to be a stoppage here. Small stoppage while they assess the wind, which does continue to pick up. Yeah, blowing towards the camera a little bit left to right as well. Maybe thinking about pivoting around for the backhand and said back to the talismanic Ancelin. Barantin, again with those chalked hands. Lachi, into the backfield. Barontan stretching the field laterally, but that's too far out in front. And it yields the turn. So after the Antoine turn, uh, gonna be a pick downfield. It takes Thomas a couple of seconds to, to pick that up. He's engaged in a battle with Baron Tan. Down the line option isn't there. Still count, got to be rising high into the center. Moss makes the catch going to be a call here down on this corner Pierre Alexandre Monet the Seski Distus defender no relation to the French Renaissance artist Monet I mean it I mean I'd be surprised if there was given that Monet was not a Renaissance artist right uh, no no he's way after no. he's way after the Renaissance goodness why do I put uh, my impression foot in my impressionism mouth like this? Monet I'm gonna have to google this I think he's an impressionist I was going to make a joke about him making a throw like a painting. Yeah, impressionist. Look at you, Benji. Anyway, the, the result of that is Disc is going to stay on this front cone with Gilboy, and this time he cannot find the centre ring pass to Moss. And look at that roll, well done to stop it by Petitou. Ancelin. Barontin. Now looking, going with the inside shot just past Gilboy. I think he's a little bit exasperated that maybe he didn't make more of an attempt for it, but threads it through to Monet and Seska Discus open with a hold. Not a clean hold, but it counts the same, one nothing. Counts the same for sure. Uh, the, w the conditions getting a bit ugly here. Seski with something to prove after not really showing up and putting their best game on stream last time of asking. All said, Finishing in the three spot, when you look at the bracket, is not the worst place to be. It doesn't provide the worst path I've ever seen. I don't know if I would ever say it was their intent, but looking at the bracket now, we've got Groot, who dropped the game to Mosquitoes, but still won their pool. That'll go against Smog in one quarterfinal. Mosquitoes and Redding on the other quarterfinal. Those winners will face each other. So the final that many assumed Redding Groot is now no longer a possibility. That will be at best a semi-final. That was, of course, their final at EUCF back in October. Hence the assumption. This side of the bracket sees the two-seed Deep Space hosting the three-seed and the arguable tougher pool, Seski, facing off. And they will take the winner of Pook Disconnection, which seeding would dictate might see disconnection. So, an, uh, who... who Reading beat earlier, or Seski beat at the start of the tournament, so they might like this path. Of course, if they'd won the pool, then they might end up facing disconnection on the other side, in the other side of their half anyway. It's funny how things work out. <laughs> Trying to get a bit of movement going on downfield. Ita Mendy's not really seeing much he likes. Swing is central to Ray. Here's Yorworth. 
The lefty opens up the arm, looking for Ray down the sideline, and she's judged that brilliantly. Seen her strut her stuff in the open division for many years. In the women's division, excuse me, now in mixed. Just as effective as Ita Mendy threads it into the end zone to the score to the captain, Khan. The hug that came out there, an absolute zipper to put things into motion there. Uh, Fee Ray fields it perfectly, as Benji says, but that really opened things up there. Deep space, put one on the board themselves in these gusty conditions, but do it with that big shot there that you get another look at. I mean, you wouldn't have known that it was gust gusty, would you? By the way, lovely box out there. Just opens up that window. The poach defender can't quite get there in time. And Ito Mendy, well, we knew him as a phenomenal goal scorer out in the final of EBUCC at the end of last year. But this time, just going to catch it outside the end zone and thread it through to Khan to tie us up at once. So we had a wild couple rounds, Benji, of quarterfinals. Men's have irked their way into semis. Women's have irked their way into semis. You'll be knowing very soon what our semi stream games will be, but right now all action on these mixed quarterfinals. Yeah, the mixed semifinals take place first thing tomorrow morning, nine o'clock local time. Both of these sides will be looking to book their place. Monet, downfield to Nimoz. Wants to get that off the line, slightly to Monet. Infield, Oof. again, just about finding the window. Nemoz uncorks the cannon. He's looking for Gay, and Gay tracks it down. Gilboy signals the score, 2-1, Sescadistus. Gay had himself turned around there. There is a conversation on the field here. That does not count yet. Yes, it does again. Took a little bit of a time to make their mind up about something. Not sure what, but in the end, calling it a goal. So Deep Space roster that has uh, had some changes this year. Players coming over from the Open and Women's divisions. Yeah. It's nice to see that kind of players being attracted to what Deep Space is putting out there and wanting to strut their stuff in the mixed division as well that often gets overlooked in favor of the single gender divisions. There are certainly moments, but uh, with success comes recruitment and uh, attraction. And uh, Deep Space have been continually qualifying now into the UCF and, you know, having a program that's on the up and up most certainly. So good to see that they're, they're attracting some talent over from the single gender pools. And yeah, they have gone deep into Euros before, premier semi-finalists, but looking to try and take them the international stage. Elliot Cook kicking things off with the jersey, the numberless jersey. Did he really not bring a light? <laughs> Khan to Cook. Back to Khan. Low to Cauldron. Cauldron uncorking the bomb. Cook rips it away for the score. Two each. Elliot Cook, of course, a member of the Mammoth Club in Brisbane from their inception, the year that I helped to form that club. I was very conveniently proud to, very proud to do that. And uh, they did go on to win their first ever national championship shortly thereafter. He's also a member of Lunchbox, which probably is a bit more on the radar for current viewers. A fourth place team over in Cincinnati in the mixed division. And uh, if you watched some of the uh, the footage there, I'm uh, sorry, they, they did get third place. The bronze, they won the bronze medal. I'm being corrected and that's absolutely right. Bronze medalist Lunchbox, but uh, they had a very close call to get into the final and uh, there's some photographic evidence of one of the calls that went against them that uh, yeah it doesn't sit that well with them I guess you kind of maybe you have that chip on your shoulder but I mean there's no use crying over spilt milk no you can't put it back in the bottle well you could but it's not making the rest you can't of the put milk it back in better. the lunchbox 
Ali Thomas with the pull. Fielded by Monet. So that tells you there's four female matching and three male matching players. Petito zips that one into Ansela. Monet looks for the continuation on the break side. It's not there, so redirect into the center. Antoine back to Ancelan. Under tight pressure and enough pressure to knock it to the floor. Now charging off deep. The throw goes. Do they have the legs to get there? Oh, Brilliantly yeah. done. Coast to coast for the score. That is effective on the turn. Thacker for the break to put Deep Space 3 2 up. Thacker putting on the wheels, the throw perfectly weighted and the Seski error in their own end hurts that much more when it goes the other way so quickly like that. And I think initially Thacker was maybe unsure about whether she was going to take off for the deep shot there, just putting enough pressure on that underneath pass. So she has a look, sees that she's got the eyes and it's Gilboy who picks it, grips it and rips it. Gilboy to Thacker for the majority of the length of the field, right in stride as well, never has to change pace. And the Brits lead 3-2. Gilboy opening that arm immediately, no hesitation, just the same. Seski wondering if this one's going to go the way of the last. They didn't come out to that scorching start last time. And uh, once they got down, they were never able to recover. They are going to need to find a bit more metal this time to uh, evade that kind of result. Right now, they go down a break early in this contest. and looking to try and right the wrongs of the previous point. Quickly, Seskidistas give it back to deep space. Thomas clears out of the handler set. Gilboy zips it through. Thomas with the continue. I think Sandwell might be out. There's I'm not gonna sure. There's going to be a discussion about it for sure. Have a look at this, see for yourself. Oh. I think that left foot's just about down first. Oh, I don't, that's a tough one. I see a straddle. At the very least, he could have uh, maybe accentuated that to make it more obvious. Maybe we can just get another cheeky run back. Ah, yes, I do agree. That was in. Just about. Call retracted, could use of hand signals. People trying to have a look on the replay screen in front of us might have a bit of a tough time. <laughs> Good thing we've got some extra screens behind the action here. Back in play here with Sandwell. Getting it off the line to Gilboy. Gilboy, oh, it's spicy, but not too spicy on that occasion. Moss can handle the heat. And Deep Space looking to emulate the feeds of their compatriots this morning by opening up an early lead on Seskadistus. It's 4-2 now. Couple, Three on the spin for Deep Space. Couple of breaks in a row. Seski, you gotta be whirling. Let's see if they stick to the same personnel out there. If they start to change things up, they're, they're, they're right back into the, the same kind of stagnancy we saw them in this morning, where they need to do something to, to break the mold here, shake out of it, because their O-line is not finding ways to generate really anything. Both of their last two possessions have been very short possessions, turnovers early in the sequences, and the defense not able to do enough to, to prevent the goals in short fields. Of course, news from earlier on today, you heard it on the stream, but Groot did take their first loss of this tournament, which was a bit of a shock against Mosquitoes, but uh, 
probably the best win in the club history of mosquitoes. That's for that's for sure. Yeah, they still ended up third in the pool on the three-way tie, and Crit still ended up top of the pool. So Mosquito is taking on Reading on the pitch just beyond this one. Oh, Ooh. that is floaty. Who's going to win that one? Khan pops up and snatches it out of the sky. Cook central to Itormendi. Low, past the bidding defender, Khan quickly dishes it off to Cook. Cook, oh, that was tipped in the midfield there by the 82, Gwendolyn Chenet. And it needed to be as well, because otherwise Yorworth could have really put the pain onto deep space. We've got an injury coming off the field, that's Gwendolyn Chenet. So, yeah, but I wonder if in the process of getting the block, she's done herself a bit of a mischief. Yoik, and there's Khan snatching the disc for the turn. So Baron Tan's going to bring it to the front line of the end zone. Trying to work out right from that front line. Lachi. Nemoz. Back to Baron Tan. Look at that pivot for the around break. Petito. To Nemoz. Wants a little bit of support. He's going to get it in the form of Barontan. Barontan out in front of Ancelot. Floated towards the break side. Petito looking for the continuation. The sidelines got something to worry about here. And I think Nemos knew the bad news that he was not in bounds. That is not in bounds that you, you would have liked to see an attempt at a greatest there. I think he was still trying to assess whether he would land in or not. And just, uh, well, that also shows how difficult even the attempt at the greatest is to catch and release while in the air. Second possession on this point. Baker slides to the turf to keep that one alive and a bit of air underneath it. Yorworth thought she had it before Petito snatched it away. And Petito gives the disc back. Yorworth, can she get it off the line? Does she need to? She goes with an option, oh, it's a bit behind. And falls incomplete. Faking the flick. Barontan opening it up, blading towards the back of the end zone over everybody. Another Tesescadistus turn. Their offense looks flustered and flummoxed out there. And Omar Khan thinks we've had enough of this mess. Let's, let's break things up here by calling the time out. We'll break things up here in the booth as well, and we'll rejoin you on the other side. We are a group of ultimate players, coaches, and video enthusiasts. We've worked with the major federations and the greatest events. We're on a mission to make Ultimate huge. We want our videos and live streams to be free to watch. We want to make stories that not only reach you, but also reach people outside the Ultimate community. Like and subscribe, Ultimate TV, the best in the world. Become a member and fund, fund our, our work, work to cover more events in the future and to bring more stories and live coverage to the eyes of the Ultimate world and, and beyond. beyond. on the move? You can keep up to date with Ulti TV on all of our social media channels. Like, follow, subscribe, share us with a friend or send us a message just to say hey. Thank you for supporting us in our mission to grow ultimate everywhere.
Welcome back to the EUF Elite Invite here in Bern, Switzerland. We're in the quarterfinals now of the mixed division, our last set of quarterfinals. Deep Space up 4-2 here on Seska Distas. Khan to Cook. Cook rips it deep. Can he to many track it down? He had some way to go, and I think he just slowed down a little bit while the disc was over his head. But even if he was at full pelt, it would have had to have been some grab. Curse of the turnout now hits Deep Space. Another all-important possession here. They all are at this stage of the game for Seski. They've conceded three in a row. They can scarcely afford to make it four. They would have the quality to come back, but the tougher you make it for yourself, well, that is certainly not going to help as it thunders off the chest of Petito. Another, another short field. Wilson just about able to weasel his way free. Faking the high releases. I'm not sure those are going to go in this weather. Sides the inside backhand through to Yorworth. So uh, tried to represent Great Britain twice and both times tournaments have been cancelled. She'll get a chance at EUC this summer and she's showing why as she finds Khan again. His second goal of the game. And I'll give it to Deep Space for their defensive pressure after the turn there, but I'm just going to take it away again from Seski. They are just shooting themselves in the foot. Their, uh, their O-line is not able to go get going. Uh, this wind is proving uh, a, a major... Uh, it's pre preventing it. It's, it's making it more difficult for them for, for certain. That coupled with the deep space defense, but they've, they've got to find a way to get it going. And, and what I'm seeing is the same personnel. I would love yeah. to see a shakeup. And okay, we've backed our O line, or it's the team that's built to to do like to, to thrive in these situations. But where is the backup plan? Where is the how many times do they have to falter before some fresh blood gets on that line? to just change things up. Yeah, they've been broken three times in a row. And on that last point, they turned it over four times but through a mixture of good defense and just straight up mistakes. But it is a very perilous position for the French champions. Back-to-back -back winners. That pull is out directly on the full, so where did that go out? The question is, would they want it? At, do they want it at the sideline, or would they take some of the uh, negative field position? Yeah, it was. It, it. Where did it cross the line out? Is what they're asking out there, and and it would probably be no more than the the brick mark is probably a half decent guess at it. So this is going to be an excellent opportunity for Seskidistas to finally stop this run of breaks. You, it's now or never for this O-line to click. Monet to Barontan. Squaring up, Anselm gets free of row. Ooh. Now trying to continue towards the break side, pumps the fake. Front of the end zone, oh, it was a little bit behind Monet. But my word, did they need him to make that catch? And he did, 5-3. But Seskidistas still in trouble here. Not looking sharpest, looking to... Let, let's see if the D-line... If they're not going to use their D-line to, to bolster or change the energy of their O-line, that D-line better start getting some turns uh, and some breaks. And here's a, another chance for him. They didn't get, they got one break against Reading in the last time we saw them. That's not enough to win games in the Elite Invite. That's certainly not enough to win quarterfinals at the Elite Invite. So D-Line's going to need to start a break train, get a turn to start, and then worry about the conversion. But it, there, there are a few options for Seski to, to change things up, to, to find new ta tactics. But but nothing more than just stepping up, like doing what you're, you've been training to do. Get that job done. You make it sound so easy, Steph. Uh, yeah, hey, guys, we're supposed to do it like this. Why is it not working? Well, of course, because Deep Space is trained to do quite the opposite and uh, counter them. And Well, potentially quite the similar, but in O-line, D-line, uh, of course, to counter each other. A wind 
certainly gusting stronger at the moment as Bru will pull from the far side of the field. Straight into the lens of the camera, a little bit right to left to go with it. Khan makes the catch on his knees. That is bold, but it gets the offense moving quickly. Back yourself, I like it. Here's Ray. Cauldron clears out. Now Cook will try and muscle his way past Bay, and he can't do so. Great. So let's do get the turn. That's not the guy that you can try and outrun Nas at this age, but I would not try to outmuscle that man. I mean, I certainly would not, but that's not a surprise to anyone. Bay has it to Bru. Gordon forcing flat, but oh, can't quite sneak it through to Mbay. It's a little too far out in front. A life for the deep space O line. Cook to Itormendi. Here's Baker in plenty of space after taking an injury sub earlier. Lachi with the defender all over the back, sticks the catch. Reset, Ancelon has to dive, but again, keeps it up. Playing in the margins, score on the far side. There's a pick away from the disc. Saying the goal stands, 6-4. Have a look at it again on the replay. Arsalan, who uh, has had to be, probably get his knees dirty on this possession, just floats that one out into space. And it's a relatively comfortable, uncontested catch for Kilian Gay for the score. <laughs> Steph, you're based in France now. I am. So you must have some familiarity with a lot of uh, a lot of this roster yeah the sesky roster is, a, is one that i saw on paper and and thought that they would be you know a, a team that could really make some noise in this tournament and they started it off that way the win over disconnection in the first round i was uh, i m maintained my belief they've got uh, you know they the local local talent from strasbourg uh, the likes of kofi monet Petito, uh, of course, Ancelin, Antoine, the, 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 a lot of the regular faces you see on this line. Very, very strong core. Then, of course, they went and added uh, a handful of uh, all French players from around the country, and each of them also quite strong. Berthe and MB Vogel at the top of that list, but this is a team that has the potential, Benji. Oh, oh. goodness, a smack away that was almost a Callahan. Yeah, they didn't field the pool particularly well. Cauldron bobbled the first pass. There is going to be a discussion, though. This all comes from just not setting up properly from that first pass. Mm -hmm. It takes a little bit of time to get going. The defense is right there. Turnover, the signal indicated by the deep space player there, Cauldron. Yeah, and I like it. Have the discussion and then you can retract if need be. Looking for the break towards the front of the stack. And they managed to set the isolation up well, and they executed it effectively, punching it in to Marbourguet for the score. And that is a Sescadistus break, their first of the game. That is very much necessary. They'll, get, they'll take that one. If the D-line doesn't have to do much work, just take a deep space error in their own end zone and capitalize on the very short field. They, they'll take anything right now to find a little bit of a spark to, to get themselves some downhill momentum that they so desperately need. You know, I say desperate, it's da they're down 6-5. They're still down a full break and uh, they did not start the scoring off, did they? No, it was, that was them who started the scoring off. So they will uh, play defense in the second half. So they're down a couple still. So having just been broken, we'll be interested to see whether Deep Space can pick themselves back up again or whether, much like they were able to do earlier in the game, 
Says this is going to get the brake train rolling. Through again with the pull. And again, the roll takes it away from them. Wilson makes the reaching catch. Wilson puts air underneath it. And using the height to get advantage, the World Games player Bate tips it away. A little fist pump after the play. Let's go. She wants her team to, to get feed off of that. Great play made by Pauline Berthe. Mac in the backside of that disc out of the field proper. If, and this is a big if, mind you, if they could work the full length of the field, we will be tied. Still, there would be the breakdown, but eating into that deep space lead. The imposing and Bay Vogel to the front cone. Flick down the line to Liron. Oh, that's low and it's behind Berthe. He gave her no chance there. Cook with the inside out shirt picks up. But you, there's definitely been a ratchet up of the pressure here as Khan shows off that athleticism with the reflex grab. Cook with Nass right on his hip. Down to Baker. Baker to Cordron. Brew left in the dust. 7 5. Seski Distas had their opportunity, but they couldn't do anything with it. Not a clean hold, but a hold the same. Sometimes they're easier to swallow when it's just a clean hold and you don't have to blame yourself for not converting. You don't have to feel the extra pain of uh, your D-line playing O being let down. Though they're still very much in this 7-5. They've got their work cut out for them, but they have been showing signs of life in the last two or three points with that break with they're, a hold thereafter and they're getting turns now on deep spaces i line more consistently it could be the start of something they hope it's the start of something well we thought that might happen in the reading game as well when they got their first break and they got no more let's see if they remain one break wonders or if they can break onto the charts here I'll allow it. Thomas again using that roll curving backhand with the pool. Takes a couple of bounces before Ansalam picks up. Bad on time. Turns. Activates Ansalam. That one Ooh. all row nearly steals underneath. But oh. Namors has the position and gets it downfield to Lachi. Man on time powers our way up line past Thomas. Thomas trying to make themselves big on the mark. Swinging around. Petito. Who's not that small despite what his name might suggest. And he came up a bit small there, I'm afraid. Down the wrong line with the throw. Just didn't seem to have that connection with Lachi. Couple of upline cuts go. Hill opens it up, shooting for Thomas at the back of the end zone, but they didn't really have a shot. They did not way too much on that. Thomas was not gonna be able to find the burners to catch up to that one. The turn initially from Lachi looking for, uh, sorry, from Petito looking for Lachi that was Again, just a little bit too much eyes, you know, overcommitted on one player, a little bit too telegraphed, and then uh, just frozen up, and, and that one got away. They've been, they've had the graces of getting it back, but a lot more field to work with this time. Ancelan, just with a throw to space to Petito, try and make amends. This time he connects with Dudu. Celine Antoine, oh, over the first receiver. 
but Louise Hoffman is sneaking in there as backup. As next to me, Gwen Tessier takes a child out of potential harm's way. I assume it's his. It is. She Down for Ancelan, too far in front. Another turn. Oh, past the bidding Petito, but Sandwell has no force. Petito is able to get back into position before any further damage is done. Broken off to Gilboy, who takes Deep Space's second timeout of the half. And we will take one here in the booth as well. Don't go anywhere. This game continues after the break. We believe mixed is the best for the sport, for the world. That's why we're making a global showcase, starting in Europe, made in Amsterdam. Ultibeek. Ultibeek.net. July from Nottingham, England, the World Flying Disc Federation's World Under 24 Ultimate Championships. Live all access coverage, including semis and finals, exclusively at ultiworld.com. Coming back in after the timeout here on Ulti TV's coverage of the EUF Elite Invite. Gilboy brings it in off the dead disc. The swing goes to Yen. Rowe, right on the sideline here, relatively flat force, finds Archer downfield. Gilboy comes through, Archer into the centre of the pitch, reaching grab made. Back to Archer, wearing those sleeves over her knees. Thomas to Sandwell in that tight space. Opening up it a little bit, it's low and Archer can't stick the catch. Add another one to the turnout list. Time over, baby. No, but the time over is when the time expires. It's got to be a turnout. <laughs> we can but have that, this discussion off stream. Yeah, but that means things would turn out properly. If things turn out, there's a positive connotation. Back to the game. Bad on sound. I'll tell you what, Gilboy almost knew preternaturally that that was coming, and he just sat there, stuck a long arm out, and knocked it to the floor. More break chances for Deep Space. They could take us into half here. Possession begins with a break to row. Continuation to Thomas. They've done really well to reach out and bring that down. To Hill. Thomas now takes down line. Looked at that a little bit late. Sanwell. Little elevator brought down by Gilboy. Just outside the end zone, can they punch it in? Row on the doorstep. To Hill, oh, it flutters, it hits the floor. Accepted foul. Hoffman was the defender. Still one throw away, I think if that foul didn't happen, that would have been in. Row goes up line, clears out the space. Ooh. And Chow Yen cannot quite get underneath it. Another chance. To hold. Tescadis just didn't actively force the turn there necessarily, but they just slowed down deep space enough to get the brakes go their way. Here's the deep shot to try to open things up. Petito is not going to be able to get that one. Bit too much on it from Lachi. You're shaking your head a bit, Steph. <laughs> uh, 
he was open. That throw had to come. But this offense, I, I would have liked to see him do it another way. It looks a bit out of sorts, I think. This, the other thing that's happening is this O-line is on the field for very long points. They're giving it away, they're getting it back, but all every time they're on, they are getting these marathons now, and that is gonna pay some tolls as this tournament and game go on. Reminder as well that Deep Space will be receiving to begin the second half as Antoine sneaks underneath, slaps it away dismissively. One pass not quite in yet. Antoine will nab herself the bookends to make it 7 6. Well, there they go. They've uh, found a way one way or the other. As much as I'm not thoroughly impressed with their offensive output from their O line, uh, they uh, they found a way to, to put it in. They are they got the goal there. They're back to within one. Still two breaks away, and they're making making a, a case for themselves. They need I, to try and eat away in the deficit as early as possible, I think, given that Deep Space received to begin the second period. I'm not sure how many players are on their O-line. I don't know if it's a very deep O-line. I don't think so. It feels like they keep putting the same players out there. So even though they are putting these points in, the fact, as you mentioned, you know, there were four turnovers aside to that point. There was another point earlier in the game where Seski's O-line turned it over four times. It will wind down and wear down those players such that as the game ticks on, they're not going to be able to attack things with necessarily the same gusto and enthusiasm that they were at the start of the game and the start of the weekend. That is what they've got to main protect just a little bit where at the same time, they, right now, they're playing from behind. They've got to start swinging and throw everything in their arsenal against them. It's, again, the the ever, ever conversed topic of rhythm versus rest. Right now, they are in rhythm. They're getting their reps. And I think they need just a little balance and, and rest a few and and change up a couple players at a time to, to get some rested and get some more out of the others. Yorworth opens the arm, bang on the money to born goal scorer Alvaro Itamendi. Deep Space 8-6 up into half. Half time goes to Deep Space. They will all get a break, but, and luckily for Seski, because to come straight back out and put the O-line on uh, after a long point and a very short uh, O point for Deep Space, would have been tough. Luckily, they'll have to put their D-line on the field, but I don't know if that is actually a lucky situation either. So, uh, Seski with their hands full here. Deep space, looking the goods in the first half. Benji, let's see what happens in the second half then. Let's take a break before we do so, so we can rest and refresh. I recommend you do the same at home. Don't go anywhere though, because the second half of this mixed quarterfinal continues on the other side. Always on the move? You can keep up to date with Ulti TV on all of our social media channels. Like, follow, subscribe, share us with a friend, or send us a message just to say hey. Thank you for supporting us in our mission to grow ultimate everywhere. My mom and I made a cookbook. Traditional recipes passed down through the generations. They cater very well to modern kitchens. 
Our recipes come from all over Italy, primarily from Le Marche in Sicily, where my parents come from. Two of the best culinary regions. All the regions of Italy have their own signature food. Buying this book will make you smarter and better looking. Mannaggia Stefano, just promote the book. Just search Mama's Italian Classics anywhere you can buy books online. And get your hands on a copy. Welcome back to the EUF Elite Invite 2023. Eight of Europe's best in open, in women's and in mixed. Battling it out for early season honors. We're in the mixed quarterfinals now. Deep Space up 8-6 at halftime on Seska Distus and receiving to begin the second period. It's Ben Juris with you in the booth alongside Steph Rapazzo. Steph, if you're in that Seska Distus huddle, you're, the, you're their coach, for example, what would you be saying to them? Here's my resignation form. No, I wouldn't be saying that. I would be saying... I was going to say, I'd be surprised. <laughs> I would be saying, hey, guys, don't make me amend the O-line. You guys are are taking too many too many risks with the disc. You're not. You know, we're throwing deep when we've got unders coming. Let's get back to our flow. Let's find our flow. We have a, a game and we're not showing it here. And I would be begging them to show that, or else giving them consequence that I'm going to change things up as far as personnel goes. Here's Baker. Blading one down the line, it's Floaty and Wilson, I thought maybe he'd gone up too early, but he stays aloft long enough to bring it down. Deep Space begin with a hold, 9-6. Given how Floaty that throw was, a bit better communication and maybe you could have had someone leaking out the back there to try and knock that down. A little leaker out the back, a little bit of help, a little bit of swarming once that disc goes up. There's a whole bunch of people who assumed they had no chance uh, when that disc was in the air and just stood and become spectators rather than trying to just like put a little pressure, hear some footsteps, some heavy breathing coming around the disc, all those things that will make a receiver second guess or turn their head away from what should be their primary focus. So that's what I would be saying, Benji. I would be saying uh, you guys are not doing your job the You're way. the O-line for the reason. Go and show it. Yeah, and and with a, a very direct consequence that, hey, I, I can only take so much more. We can only withstand so much more. We we want this change together. Let's uh, let's get let's show me that you're capable. That you're that my decision to put you in that job was the right right decision. If not, I'm going to do the only thing I can right now and make personnel changes. And that's where I think a off-field coach can do a bit more than an on-field coach, especially when that on-field coach is a member of the O-line. Yeah, sometimes it'll be difficult to identify the problem if you're partly the problem. Bad on time. Oh, Moss lost his footing there. Didn't and slow Petitot down. And nearly came the back on Petitot, yeah. Sorry, Steph. Antoine, down the line. Threads it through to Nimoz. Nimoz back to Barantin. Faking the low release. Looking for options. Not any support in the backfield. Has to go down the line. All oh, floats it up. And this is what we were calling for from Seska Distus on that previous score. Deep Space had players ready and waiting at the back to smuggle it away. Moss to the slashing Thomas. Thacker charges through. Look at that speed. Thomas says, nah, nah, we're not doing this. Let's just slow it down a bit. Get back into rhythm. Gilboy decides otherwise, though. He wants to rip it. He's got Moss. It's 10-6 to deep space. Siskidistus was so good up until the end zone. They got a little bit muddled. And then deep space go right down the other end and score. Uh, yeah, so good until the end zone. The throw for goal just showed way too much of the bottom side of that disc to the wind as benji likes to say it was uh it, it, it was just not a good throw not one single bit uh barantin was responsible for that one it went up and into a crowd and again 
two big throws went the other way. One, two, Thomas. She slowed it down after she caught it. I, I love that you see kind of the duality of humankind there. You've got the jack, and then Thomas is like, no, 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 no. We'll just, we'll just keep it cool. And, they throw it to Gilboy, and then Gilboy's like, nah, we're just going to jack it again. And it worked. It worked a treat, because it gave enough time to clear out that space to allow Moss to make the deep cut. Wind picking up again here. I do feel if the game continues to get windy, it goes to a slower pace. It favours the side that's built up that breathing room, that cushion, as Deep Space have here. Yeah, they can afford to trade, most certainly can Deep Space. They're playing defense, wind. I was going to say at their back, but it's not. It's still probably a bit more left to right, but more right towards the cameras. Yeah, diagonal towards the bottom right of your screen. I'd give you a, a cardinal direction, but I don't know what. Lachi. Upline. Squeezes it through to Monet. Monet, he's got the poach in the end zone, but there's just enough traffic to make him decide against it. Ansel Allen, little float, not a problem for Monet. Uh, travel called, I think, potentially. Retracted. And he apologizes as well. And D Space is a side that prides himself on being fair and communicative well. Thacker slips, loses a matchup. Can they take advantage of the confusion? No, Badontan throws behind Ansalam. Sanwell, I think, wanted the lead pass to Moss. Moss is eventually going to get it a bit later in the stall count. Moss down the line. Oh, that's floaty. Sanwell past the bidding defender of Gay. What a wicked low release there. Back to Thacker from Sandwell. A little bit of the wrong edge on that one. Chow Yen makes the catch. Moss, back to Thacker. I thought she wanted the big there, but the cut wasn't developing. Moss, back to Thacker. Becoming increasingly influential on this possession. Sandwell. Fakes the backhand, floats the flick towards the far side for Archer. Back to Sandwell. S a much slower place possession, this one. Slowly matriculating the disc down the field. Thacker back to Sandwell. Surely this has got to go down the line to Thacker. It does. Moss takes off. Thacker tries to get the roll curve on it. And Onsalan over the top. But there is going to be a discussion. If they could have a discussion, we might get a chance to have another look at that. There's definite contact in the back of Moss. Yeah, the Anselin's elbow on the top of his head there. He's definitely got a case to call that foul. Great play, athletically speaking, from Anselin, but the body control just a couple centimeters off. I think, again, at the very least, if you're not sure, make the call here, especially because it wouldn't be a quick pickup anyway. Have the discussion. Yeah, he's got, I mean, uh, he may have a case on a strip there too. He had his left hand into the body, right hand, a little bit of elbow on the head. And there's a case where he may well have had his hand squeezed. Uh, I mean, he can. He certainly has the right to make that foul call. Let's see how they resolve it, Benji. Yeah, I think you always have the, generally you always have the right to make the call, such as the, how the self-officiation works, but that one, again, it feels like he's justified in, in making it. They cannot agree. It will be contested and sent back to Thacker. Uh, I get the feeling that she might not pull the trigger this time. Underneath instead to row. Look at that speed to just burn past Ansalan. He's being a little bit pedantic on the spot. Low. Oh, it's tipped. And enough of a tip as well to take it away. That was a beautiful D from Hoffman, Louise Hoffman. 
and much needed as well. Because 11-6, feel like it might be game over. 10-7 if they get the potential for that one is a much more desirable scoreline for the for the players in blue. But again, these are long, long O points as Rose all over the back of Ancelan there. And this is a floater from Ancelan deep. A couple of receivers there. And Gay makes a relatively comfortable catch in the end, 4-10-7. But again, it's you're comparing the, the length of time that the Seska Distance O-line is out there compared to how quick the deep space O-line points tend to be. Wouldn't be, it's not a surprise if uh, the Seska Distance O-line would be a fair bit more tired. Well, you can see with uh, number 29 right now in the end zone on his haunches, Gay took about uh, 20 seconds to get up after making the, the long cut and the score there. They are definitely fatigued. Everybody out here, of course, tired, but you see it much more in the Seskadistas side right now. Uh, that play I wanted to retouch upon by Hoffman. Timing-wise, Benji, you're right. There couldn't have been a more apt moment to take that one away. Also, don't love that attempt at it from Rowe. Always going to come through on Salan there. I don't know whether he lost his footing or just misjudged it. Either way, that one needs to go back in the box, but it didn't work because it left him out of position. And it meant Onsalan had all the space to step into the flick, put the air underneath it, backed his receivers. They had position, and Kilian Kay answered the call, or Kiki, as they call him. Second time seeing the deep space O-line this half. First point, only took a couple of passes before Yoreth ripped it for the score. And that pull by Mbe Vogel, well beyond the field proper. Given that the wind is pushing everything out of this sideline, I'm surprised that more teams aren't pulling from right the way over the far side of the field. And, and trying to throw it on to the next field. Cook representing the sport well with his inside out jersey. <laughs> you can to be, be fair, he's Australian, so it's probably the white ray round for him. That's how it works, right? <laughs> right on, mate. Crikey. Here's Yorworth. We know she's got a cannon if she wants to. This time, just going back to Khan. Khan Wilson with two outstretched arms brings it in. Khan with the up line. Gets the disc, fakes it. Oh, that's a huge bite on the force. Who was on that hook, line, and sinker. Yorworth. Khan jinking and jiving. Squirrels his way free. I think he wants the inside there. With the stalk out rising, goes with the offhand, and it's too far in front of Yorworth. Credit Berthe, who was providing sticky coverage on that reset. Seski D-line, get the turn, that's the first part. Can they convert? Just the one break so far. For the French, that's not going to do it. Miscommunication, Ito Mendy runs straight onto it, and in one pass to Wilson, it's 11-7. Big miscommunication there, out of the hands of Mbe Vogel. They're making eyes and hands on hips, trying to assess responsibility, trying to assess how they might uh, amend this going forward, but uh, wow, they, they make they get one good thing going for them and give it right back. And look at the speed of conversion going the other way. One throw, Seski, that is going to drop some heads, I imagine. I'm not familiar particularly with French transport systems. The Metro uses numbers, doesn't it? Yes. So that doesn't quite work. In English, I'd say that uh, the receiver made the cut down the Jubilee line and the throw went down the Bakerloo. <laughs> but you get you get what I'm saying here, right? I, I do. They're just completely not on the same page at all. Not at all. Either one of those lines, I'm sure you could come out somewhere near a 7-Eleven to get yourself a Slurpee. I'd be surprised. I don't think we have them in the UK. There's got to be one. I would bet parts of my... Actually, I'm going to just stop there before yeah, I, I, I might Google say, it first. Yeah, I was going to say, don't do something you might later regret. But there must be a 7-Eleven in all of the UK. Somebody let me know. YouTube chat, there's your task. 
The wind whipping up, not a problem for Antoine. Stepping back from the international game after World Games last year, but more than happy to strut his stuff here in the club division. Here is Dudu, Antoine. Back to Anselm. Those red and blue Tokai cleats. Breaking it around towards the far sideline, Petito. Monet. Cheeky little offhand, backhand. Lachi with the blade to space for Anselm. A nice clean hold for Seskidistas. We haven't seen that since they scored to make it 6 4. They'll take it. They need breaks just the same, but a clean hold to set one up is uh, the right way to do it. Keep the O line on the field for as short of a time as possible is one step in the right direction. Though only the first step of a series of what's necessary. And to credit Seska Distance's D-line, they have generated turns. But with that one exception, they've done kind of the grand total of, well, not nothing, but very little with them. Both sides getting ready. The fact that Bru has the disc in her hands ready to pull will say that it is four female matching and three male matching players, of course, using the prescribed puller rule. In effect, one of those rules that seems so obvious in high insight that you're kind of thinking, why didn't no one use this before? So Peru is going to pull from that far side of the field, heeding our advice. And that blading backhand from the lefty, fielded right on this line by Khan. First pass to Cook, then to Cordron. Familiar with this division, of course, having played with Reading. Now making the move over to deep space. You're worth high. Oh, fakes the big. Cook clearing out. Itamendi sprints and strides through. Seskidistas doing a pretty good job of gumming up options. Kofi on the force for Khan. Cook puts it underneath it. Baker saw it late. And maybe I think if he just put a bit more air under it, she would have had time to get herself in position. As it is, the deep turnover. Give Seska this is the chance to try and just claw away at the deep space advantage. Undercooked throw there. Not enough on it. Uh, throwing air by Cook, of course. Gives Seski a much needed chance. And Mbe Vogel a chance to redeem his last touch. Itomendi's going to call the foul here. So there was a, a little bit of a push off on that cut from Benoit René, who threw the assist for the only break of the game for Seskidistas. Elea. To Kofi in the backfield. The bulk of the play in the backfield now. Pass off the switch. Azambe cannot connect with Bru. Gordon picks up quickly. Khan towards the sideline. Wants to probably try and get this in a more central position. Opens up the space to the Australian Cook. Disappointingly not from the Cook Islands. Here's Ray. Oh and takes a pretty hefty landing. A, both of them eyes away from each other, but a Tough collision to end up shoulder to shoulder with Nasser Mbe Vogel there. Good spirits all round. Not that I think I've ever seen Ray in a bad mood. Breaking to Cordron.
looking for an option. It's the reset to Cook. Cook trying to take on the inside backhand, but doesn't like it. Khan scuttles past Mbe Vogel. Itamendi to the front cone, no. Back to Cook. This is a really disciplined red zone stand from Seskidistus. Devilish low inside flick. And then continuation, the high release backhand from Cauldron. Hits the target. It's Yorworth. It's 12-8. The stand was there. It looked like it was a bend, but no break. But but they did break. The, the the defense faltered at the very end. They got another turn. They had another short possession with that disc. And again, like great defensive pressure, but the, the, the they're just playing defense a little bit too long. And uh, deep space. If they if they're gonna get these opportunities back time and time again they're going to put them in they are that they are that good for sure with 12 on the board already it's very clear you we see, talk, sorry i'll let you finish your thoughts I, I, I was switching gears there but you see that throw there kofi did even get a hand on it the the cook throw across and partial hand block but still completed the low throw we did ask at the start of the game what can deep space do to take this net to take that next step Putting a performance like this against a team the quality of Seskidistus is certainly a good start. We've got some answers in the uh, in the chat. Thank you very much. In the UK, 7-Eleven came to the country in 1985 and operated there until 1997. It had over 50 scores and is remembered by many UK residents as having been part of their retail landscape. So I guess that means no right yeah, it now. It was, but not anymore. Well, I'm glad I didn't part the bet bits of my anatomy on that one. Ansalam trying to get it off into the chalked hands of Baron San, climbs the ladder in front of Thomas. Petito. Again, putting air underneath it. Ansalam boxes out and adjusts and has time to just watch that one right into his clutches. Back to Petito. Ansalam again. Ooh, oh, in and out of the hands of Lachi. And that is a tale of the game there, Benji, a microcosm of what we've been seeing and how things have been bouncing and going for Seski Distus. Thomas works their way free of Barontal. Back to Gilboy, who wants the timeout. And he's going to get it as well. Just some discussion about the stall count. I think everyone seems happy. So they will go into their huddles. And this is the part where normally we'd we'd throw it into some words from our sponsors. But uh, Steph, I think you have something maybe, uh, a, I would say, a lot more interesting. Beep, 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 beep. Breaking, breaking news, news, breaking news. Uh, this in EUC are looking for player for players from minority ethnic backgrounds who would be interested in participating in a European showcase game as part of an ongoing project to highlight and celebrate the talent we have across Europe amongst minority ethnic groups. Inspired by the color of Ultimate and Mesh, it will be a mixed game with approximately 28 players, two teams of 14, and will take place on Thursday, the 20th of July. Yes, that's at the European Ultimate Championships. It will be played in the evening on their main pitch after all other games have been played and will also be streamed. The goal of this showcase is to increase visibility of athletes from minority backgrounds in, in sport, to Europe and the Irish community, as well as to provide footage to show young athletes from minority backgrounds that there is place for them in Ultimate. We welcome applications from all European players who identify as being from minority ethnic backgrounds. We understand asking players to fly to Limerick is not, therefore, uh, is a lot. Therefore, the tournament uh, partners Force have kindly offered support to help players. Force will provide a fan store when the wider Ultimate community and general public will be able to purchase a replica of the EUC Diversity Showcase kit. Any profit made from selling of the kit will be put into a pot for helpful uh, funds for these players. Thank you to Force. We'll give more information. It's a very long press release, but a bit more at when we get one more break. But exciting stuff for the Diversity Showcase coming up at the EUC. Yeah, there'll be a bit more from Steph on how to apply a little bit later, but certainly, again, another exciting development. That is a floaty one, tipped away by Antoine on the doorstep, and then oh, oh, what a layout from Antoine for the bookends. But unfortunately, 
there is a call that might take this back because it was a play that you feel deserved the reward of the goal. I think it might be a foul call on the block. Have a little look for yourself. The throw, I think, is actually tipped there by Lachi trying to make amends for the drop on the end zone line. The two sides engaged in the discussion. Maybe a little bit of time, Steph, to tell people how to apply for that diversity showcase. Great time indeed for that. So the deadline will be June 20th. Uh, our first deadline is June 20th. This application is to be part of the starting six. These are three female matching and three male matching players who will act as the face of the game. They will be our ambassadors for the event who will aid with, so with social media and take the leadership role on the day. Our second deadline is July 10th. This application is to be part of the wider roster for the game. Selection will be based on skill, uh, sorry, skills, skill set and experience. We will reach out to all applicants and let them know of their status. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact Felix.Nemec, F-E-L-I-X dot N-E-M-E-C at ultimatefederation.eu. So there are all the details, exciting stuff. Diversity showcase at EUC. Let's get the starting six, be the faces of these games, the all-stars, if you would, of the ethnic diverse community. Interesting to see if there are any players maybe from these teams who want to try and put their names forward for that. So they just went back to deep space after the call. Antoine's hard work for Nort at least for the time being. Gilboy sliding, making the catch. I think Gilboy might have uh, tweaked something there. Oh, tweaked indeed. He's gingerly walking off the field there. Seems like a lower body joint, likely ankle is my initial estimation here. Eh. Yeah, I think maybe the ankle slides potentially. Elliot Cook's coming in as the injury sub. Cook rips it right down the center of the field. Ancelan smothers it at the back. Antoine. I don't think that substitution worked quite as intended for deep space. <laughs> Baron San with those chalked hands. Puts the air underneath it. A couple of players there. And oh, Petito got up well. Was he thinking, is he calling a foul? I don't think he is. I think they, I think that was the, sim, sim, uh, the symbol he made for turnover, but I just think they want a new disc. That one wasn't catchable enough. to row. Travel court, I think. Yes, indeed. That's the hand signal we're getting, Bench. This game has become a lot more stop-start. Row gets the undercut regardless. The swing from Cook to Rowe. Underneath. Trying to marshal the troops. And so offloads, then clears downfield. Sandwell. Back to Cook. Cook, ooh, pilfered there and pickpocketed. Some Dickensian sleight of hand almost from Ancelin. And he now wants the disc every other pass. Badontan says no, because the deep look is there. Ooh! Oh my goodness! That 
is frankly illegal. Loris Petitor, take a bow. It I mean, is. that is just... You cannot be doing stuff like that. That is exactly what they needed from one end to the other. Anselen, the D down there, cat-like reflexes uh, to snatch that away uh, while evading the body contact as well. And then the other way. I cannot wait to look at this trailing edge layout again. I mean, Here this comes is a, another look. It's a hero maker of a pass from Bad on Town. And thankfully, Petit Do is that hero. You can't be doing stuff like that. Goodness just, gracious. Not... Oh, my word. For Seska Distus, it's a huge energy giver. It's kind of just the same that it has to come to that, maybe, in order to get these points on the board. Everyone needs a breath from the timeout. I think I do it here in the booth as well, mainly so I can get rid of a bunch of expletives and profanities that are coming to mind. We'll see you in a couple of minutes. You can buy your lovely OTTV swag from our friends over at Force Ultimate. Go do it. No better time than the present, the power of now. And keep an eye on Force as well for those, uh, those kits from the European Diversity Showcase at EUC in a couple of months' time. So Anselen has crossed over to the D-line, <laughs> probably not the way I was thinking the crossovers were going to go. But after a spark like that, that is what we've been waiting for, a spark for Seski, none bigger than what we just saw in that last point, particularly the Petit Toe grab to Can we just go, it. like, prestige on them and just clone Petit Toes? They're going to try it themselves. Hi, Itamendi. Kofi sucking him into getting too far underneath it. I think he thought about it and then decided, you know what, that was way over my head. Yeah, it was that maybe a bump, yes, but there was never going to be a chance on that one. I mean, he's good, but he's not that good. Khan just asked too much of him there. Again, just the one break so far for Seskidistas. This would be their second. I think the cap's due to go on any second now if it hasn't already. I didn't hear the Hooter slash whistle. Bru in the backfield to Mbay Vogel. Liron. Underneath to Ancelin. Of course, was playing. Glimmers of hope now. Shimmers of hope for themselves in a game that has been deep space from beginning till now. Deep space still, as you say, in the driver's seat. But a signs of life from Seski late in this game. I don't know what the French euphemism is for having stones, if you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, wait. I'm just going to keep that one in the pocket, though. I think I've Probably got the euphemism wise. there. Either way, it would be a steely comeback. Worse as is to do it, but Deep Space is going to have more than enough opportunities to get it finished on offense. Spirit still high for both sides on the sideline. It's been a intense, closely fought game. We'll say it would take, we'll, we'll stick to what stoicism says and say that they will have the virtue 
to be able to pull this one off. Ito Mendy nervously catching the pull. Khan to Cook. Angle's not quite there to Yorworth. Khan puts a bit of air under it. Baker catches, Cauldron charges off deep. Baker into the backfield for Khan. Khan, here's Wilson, looking downfield. Squares up, it, looking towards the center now. Cook can't get free of Mbe Vogel, still rising. Ito Mendy releases. Trying to take on the break. Yorworth, Ooh. I thought that was going to escape her, but she sticks the catch and punches it into Khan. And we'll see deep space in the semis tomorrow morning. 13-10 final score. Hold their medal there, dude. Deep space, a couple of touches that were just at the edge of the reach of, of a few of those receivers. But they do hang on in both cases. They do continue it all the way through the end zone. And they do book themselves in to a semifinal appearance, which will be tomorrow morning, of course, here on Alti TV. Yeah, they face the winner of Pook versus, set, uh, versus Disconnection uh, in the other half of the bracket. Reading wrapped up a 59 uh, win over Mosquitoes, and they will take on the winner of Hritz and Smog, which looks to still be ongoing at the moment. We'll wrap that one up here. Just gonna uh, have a little peek for you at some of the statistics of that game. Having a look there, the breaks. No surprise, uh, we talked about the Seski breaks, one early and one very, very late there. The four for Deep Space uh, gave them separation. The, around the middle of the, the guts of that game, a pair of... I, just say, I think it's a little bit misleading, the clean holds, because you look at it and think, well, maybe Seska Distance's O-line was about on a par with Deep Space, but of course, because Deep Space got those extra breaks, they've got fewer opportunities to generate those those chanceless possessions. And I think the clean breaks is one that uh, tells a bit of a tale, the three they got. I think if you could have a timer on those three, because their counter-strike was very quick, uh, and, you know, the quicker they are, the harder they sting, <laughs> or the more they sting. And, and they were, uh, in that case, those three breaks, clean breaks, were, yeah, really what broke some of the will and, uh, and provided all the separation there in the middle of that game against Seskadistus. So we're just going to wrap things up for us here from the Mixed Division at day two of Elite Invite. Next up, the Mixed Division is in the semi-finals. First thing tomorrow morning, nine o'clock. We will let you know on those games as they take place. It looks like Hrit have just polished off Smog. So Hrit Reading, a repeat of the Euros final on one side, and then Deep Space versus Disconnection or Pook, which you would expect to be Disconnection, but you never know. We will see on the other side of the bracket. We're gonna to switch to the open semi-finals up next. A storied rivalry, La Fota versus Clapham in the open semis very shortly. But in the meantime, for our Ulti TV crew and Steph Rapazzo alongside me, Benji Reese saying we'll see you on the other side. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thank you. Thanks. 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 Yeah, ultimate. It's TV.